There is a real lot of misinformation going on. I agreed the fuck out of it. <laughs> I'm not interested in laughs. I can't help. I can't help people agreeing with me. Don't do I pick those who will agree with me. I agreed the fuck out of it. But don't you think? I'm not responsible for a person who goes around saying I agree with Enoch Powell. Was it funny? No. All our freedoms are being eroded. Enoch Powell's the only person who's got it right. In there, where they were virulent in their mm. insults, mm. I remember them calling me a fake black. Yeah. And uh, there was a lovely lady uh, called Marion who is West Indian came over and they were shouting racist to her and Winston McKenzie, you're a racist, mm -hmm. black, mm -hmm. Asian, mm -hmm. Jewish, receiving these vile taunts and languages mm -hmm. from the left. Mm -hmm. Yet it seemed to be for the meritocratic elitists, the media supporters and other political parties, that it was perfectly acceptable mm -hmm. For that level of abuse to be aimed at elderly people, young mm. people, mm. people campaigning for a genuinely decent political idea of leaving the European Union, for controlled migration, mm. for protection of the culture of our nation, for ensuring that the working class and the middle class who are suffering under cost restrictions should be benefited in some way, was vile. And yet, mm. Mm. we also physically saw the physical abuse, Nigel Farage being hit over the head mm. by a banner, him having eggs thrown at him. I yeah. was in a restaurant with him in Brussels when he was attacked by an Irishman who disagreed with his stance on Ireland. Language matters, but it didn't seem to matter. Mm. Physicality matters, but it didn't seem to matter if you were part of the conservative uh, viewpoint mm whether you're Gove or Rees Mogg, or whether you were those who were opposing the European Union or had an ideology that was based on faith, flag, and family. Of course, we know that there are lawyers involved in this mm. in terms of legal aid. Mm. Now, our numbers seem to show that perhaps there's between 11 to 22 million pounds a year in legal aid being provided for on cases related to asylum appeals. Although that's not clear whether that also includes those from the first tier tribunal appeals or even those doing judicial review. السلام علیکم ناظرین سلامی امیگیشن کے ساتھ اس ہفتے میں پھر حاضر ہوں آپ کی لائف کالوں کا جواب دوں گا کچھ آپ کو مفید معلومات اور بریٹن آنے کا ارادہ کریں تو جو مین اپلیکنٹ ہے وہ تو بریٹش ہے ہی لیکن وہ سمجھے جائے گا کہ وہ یورپین رائٹس ایکسرسائز کر رہا تھا ٹریٹی رائٹس ایکسرسائز کر رہا تھا جرمینی میں یا آئرلینڈ میں The United Kingdom is currently a mess on top of that, there's growing momentum for Scotland and maybe even Northern Ireland to leave this mess behind and break away from the UK. Again, what we have here is obfuscation yeah, yeah. from the Legal Aid Board who won't provide us on our Freedom of Information quest on the exact numbers. Here there is a refusal, which is about 45% last year refusal rate. So, the appeal and the system is still running here. And then we will have to focus on the GT. So, this is why we are doing this. 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 تو یہ کافی کامیابی سے چل رہا ہے اور لوگ اس کو کافی یوز کر رہے ہیں تو میں نے جو شروع میں بات کی تھی وہ تھوڑی سی ادھوری رہ گئی تھی یہ میں آپ کو بتانا چاہوں گا یہ پوٹ دیو اس آپ دیو دن یس بی دیو ایم ٹوکنگ اباؤ سمتنگ مچ مچ بگر ایس سیٹ اف پرابلمز سو سسٹیمک that they go beyond party politics and could affect the future of the United Kingdom the idea of ethno-nationalism that is to say nationality being congruent with ethnicity I suspect that many viewers were thinking to themselves, and why not? 
It is, after all, not exactly a new way of looking at things, and Europe from the mid-19th to mid-20th century thought that the nation-state, based upon ethnic affinity, was the best way of ordering society. It was certainly the most common way. It is still the case that ethnic Greeks can claim citizenship of that country, even if their families have been living in, say, Turkey or Cyprus for centuries. Germany, too, preserves the idea of Volkdeutsche in their constitution. So why does it feel like the UK is falling apart? And what's caused this crisis? There was, until a little over 20 years ago, a similar way of thinking in this country. The idea of Englishness which didn't disappear when an English family went abroad. Englishness was something which one could pass on to one's children, and it was implicitly a racial thing, being English equated with whiteness. I do not say whether this was a good thing or a bad thing, merely that it was a thing, until a few years ago. When did this change? So it's no rocket science, it just requires a lot of reading and obviously understanding the general public sometimes would read things. Booklet AN is uh, just a simple uh, explanation of how to fill in the application form. He is not granted nationality because of any issues, then the £80 for oath ceremony is refunded because there would be no oath ceremony. The balance is the fee, which is a processing fee, there is no refund. When did this change? As it happens, we can date the change in perception fairly precisely. Here's a book which was published in Britain 20 years ago. It's part of the old Teach Yourself series, which older viewers might remember with pleasure. They used to be very popular with people who wished to improve themselves without going to evening classes and so on. This one is 101 Key Ideas in History. Now, this is not the product of some crazed neo-Nazi. It's simply a neutral introduction to important ideas in the study of history. It was published in 2002, precisely 20 years ago. Let me read out a paragraph from the, sen the um, section on nationalism. Normally, nationalists believe in the unique organic qualities of their national community. Thus, nationalists identify a wide range of markers that they feel contribute to the creation of their national identity. These markers have included language, geography, culture, race, folklore, history or religion. For example, it is well known that the English are an island people. They are traditionally Protestant Christians and they hold a sense of history that underlines their national strength in trade and warfare and national and naval supremacy. Hmm. I mean, imagine mentioning casually that English nationality was tied up with Protestant Christianity today. Or all that stuff about national strength in trade, warfare and naval supremacy. <laughs> it's another world, isn't it? This sounds today like something one might read in a book from a Victorian classroom. And yet, 20 years ago, this was a fair and objective appraisal of the very idea of Englishness, of English nationality as it was generally accepted. So much has changed since the publication of this book that it's difficult to know where to start. Try mentioning that being English is part of a tradition of Christianity now and you'll soon find yourself being accused of Islamophobia. <laughs> Revolution. 
and I think he should apologise.